Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Rico and today we are going to talk about uh, self-generative music. So, self-generative music is music that is generated by itself. It's music that is generated within the computer using MIDI information. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna use Ableton MIDI device that comes with the program. And we're gonna use one max for light device as well. And uh, all those devices are going to create music for me. Well, I have to program them first, uh, but they are going to create an infinite repetition of melodic information that is going to never stop. So it's going to be chapter after chapter of pieces of music. And uh, the instruments we're going to use are Spitfire Audio, which is um, a UK company that it's amazing. All the instruments I'm going to use today in the video are for free. And I will put the link in the description and all these instruments have this very cinematic ambient symphonic feel. So it's going to be very much fun. So let's have a look. Let's play first the demo and after we're going to talk about how to do it. It's, it's a very nice symphonic piece of music that seems to be played by an orchestra almost. So all the music that is playing here, it's physically generative, uh, generated by itself. So let's go through one by one, basically. So let's solo the first one. The first instrument is a piano from Labs, Spitfire Audio Labs. So it's a soft piano uh, plugin. Um, let's just mute all the MIDI devices that you can see here and also all the effects. So we're just going to play the piano. So this is the piano that I played. Not even so beautiful, just, you know, pretty much played randomly with my uh, MIDI keyboard. So. So this is going to be repeated all the time. So the cool things about the generative MIDI uh, devices is that uh, the first thing I'm going to play is a, a random plugin from Max for Live. So it's from um, Ableton Live. So the, the random plugin it's randomly picking different notes every time it's playing. So it won't play always the same. It will be always different every time it's, it's pressing uh, the notes. Then the second one it's note length which is the length of the note, if you want to be short or long. And it's uh, connected with the LFO device that is basically setting the length and the short every time. So it's not going to be always the same uh, distance, basically. The third device is a MIDI chord. So instead of playing one note, it's playing a chord. The fourth device is a velocity. So the velocity device, basically, the velocity is every time I am touching the keyboard, it's how strong I'm pressing the button. It's called velocity. So if I do like this, it's a very soft velocity. If I do like this, it's a very strong velocity. So this um, device is randomizing the pressure of my finger on the piano. Um, the last mini device, probably the most important, it's a scale plugin, and I want to set the scale plugin for this entire song on the minor. So the scale plugin is correcting all my notes. So the scale plugin is correcting all my random chord with the random velocity to the scale of D. And then we have another two uh, LFO device that are controlling a different parameter of the random um, velocity then i have another lfo which is controlling the intensity of the velocity of the uh, speed fire so i have two velocity randomizer as you can see here it's moving then i have a delay just to give it a little bit, little bit of delay and a auto pan auto pan is panning left and right the signal every time. 
So that's the first one. And also I have uh, a sense to a open, uh, very ominous reverb. So that's the first one. The second one, well, the second one and the third one are doing the same things, but they are different notes. So the second one, it's a string that is always uh, sustaining with a uh, this, time, this time there is no a random device, so it's always playing this note, but it's random velocity with a chord, a scale plugin on the minor. Let me just play a bit louder because it's very difficult to hear. There is an auto filter, so the auto filter it's doing like this all the time, so it's doing a cutoff of the frequency, and then I have an auto pan as well. There is a new device here, which is a Max for Life device by Mario Nieto, which is, um, I've done a tutorial about this de particular device, which is really, really cool. The random chord generator function as a scale plugin and a chord plugin together, but it's a little bit more complex than uh, a normal um, scale and chord plugin. It has much more function, basically. So. The context is just a sustained note that is always in the background. And it's connected also with two returns that are delay and reverbs. Then the third one is the, sa is the same. It's a sustained note, but it's a little bit more bassy than the previous one. So it's got a random device, so every time the note is being heated, it's always changing the note, so it's always randomly changing the note. Velocity random all the time, because I like always to have different intensity of pressure with the finger, because otherwise it would be a bit boring if it would be always the same pressure. A random device with the scale of D, like before, so basically it's the copy of the second channel, uh, D minor scale, and then, like before, I have a auto filter and auto pan so so the second and the third channel are basically two sustained notes that are always uh, rising but this, the third one is changing because I have a random pitch then let's move to the fourth one So the first instruments from Labs Spitfire, it's uh, Lab Steel, which is uh, basically a guitar touch. It's got a random device, it's got a chord device, a velocity, but this time we have an arpeggiator as well. So it is arpeggiating, but the, arpegi the arpeggio rhythm, it's very slow. As you can tell here, it's a very slow arpeggio, so... And it's corrected with a, a scale plugin. Then I have an LFO device that is triggering the steps. If I put the rate a bit faster, you can see that the steps are is oscillating between one and two. So it's oscillating between one step and two steps of repetition with arpeggiator. So there is a variation in the arpeggiator as well. Um, then we have a simple echo, an auto pan that is doing a left and right channel, and then I have an auto filter that is doing the low cut uh, job, basically. It's a very slow arpeggiator connected to a sand that goes to a delay. So let's play the other three together with this one. So you see that everything is coming together really nicely. The big picture, basically. Then we have the fifth instrument, which is Spitfire Lab, uh, pedal pads. So it's a very soothing, warm synth, basically, with a sand to a long reverb. A random plugin, so every time 
every time this loop is playing, so as you can see, it's a very simple loop with seven notes, but they are always changing because of the random plugin. Then we added a Max for Life um, random uh, Max for Life melody device. It's a bit confusing because there are so many plugins uh, connected. And then we have a, C, a D minor scale that is correcting every time our note. So let's play this in the context with the other four. Okay, so our sixth instrument, it's a music box. So it's these little, uh, beautiful little boxes uh, from Spitfire Audio. And uh, every time it's playing, there is a random plugin. So we have two notes basically on, on this instance. One is B and the one one is C sharp. And every time it's been generated, the MIDI note is changed by the uh, random plugin. Then we have a velocity of the pressure of the piano, finger piano. Then we have a random chord generator from uh, Marinetto that is doing the uh, D minor scale as well at the same time. So this time we don't have the MIDI device of the scale, but we are using just the Max for Live. Then we have an echo plugin. And then we have a bit repeater. So the bit repeater, in this case, it's uh, repeating the sound of the, of the music box It's, it takes the section and it, and it duplicates it like if it's a bit, basically. So it's like a dist glitchy destructive uh, transformation, let's say. And it's very uh, soft. I don't know if you can hear it sometime. Well, it's not always uh, sounding, but it's there and sometimes it's triggered not always so let's play this one together with the rest and see then we have the instrument number seven which is uh, arctic swells probably one of my favorite sounds. Beautiful, like Lord of the Rings type of uh, uh, warm pad. So again, here I have, I just put a just simple uh, few chords this time. And the chords is changing all the time, obviously, thanks to the random generative uh, MIDI trigger. I have also the MIDI scale plugin on set on D. I have an auto filter that is basically, let me just play this one. It's doing the job of uh, cutting. So it's doing this by itself using the amount. Then I have a LFO, which is connected to the panning of the channel. So as you can see, it's doing the left and right by itself without using the auto pan. Sometimes I like to use the LFO to do these kind of things. So let's play the context with the others and see all together. It is becoming a really beautiful motif, cinematic motif, basically. And the cool thing about it is that it's all generative using the MIDI uh, random devices and correcting it with the scale plugin. Each one of the channel has a combination of different MIDI devices that gives a different sound. Then I have uh, the last two sounds, which are audio. So the first thing, it's a field recording. Um, it, I was on the street recording the sound of, of uh, the city of London. So 
there are plugins, sorry, there are sends that are sending to the reverb. That's why you have this uh, very strong ominous reverb connected to an auto filter that is doing the job of cutting off every time the sound. I have an auto pan that is uh, doing left and right. And obviously, you know, with the equalizer just to cut and remove the, the, the frequencies that are the basis one. So this just stays in the background, basically. Well, then I have another audio, which is the voice of a baby. The voice of the baby, it's pretty much transformed a lot because I have used all the scents this time. So there is a big combination of a sense effect. There is an auto pan that is doing the left and right and an auto filter that is cutting off every time. So all in all, this is all the generative sounds that are happening in the song. And you can let the song play for, for an hour, two hours, and it will never stop basically. It will be always this endless soundtrack in the background. Then, for put the cherry on top, I have put a absinthe with the fifth uh, with the chord plugin and the scale plugin, so that I can also play live. I can also play additional something on top of it. So yeah, this is how the generative music works. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. And um, I will uh, leave five minutes of just music because uh, I think this piece is very nice and I'm going to play a little improvisation at the end of the video um, without me talking. And I will leave the description of how to get these uh, Spitfire Lab plugins on, the, on my channel. And uh, thank you for everything and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.